want to do the introduction into our start off with these meetings tonight. And I want to speak to us and maybe what else? Can you do it now? No. That's, that's fine. So I can see that. Thanks, John. I want to speak to you about the word as our reality. And uh, in that process, I also want to maybe challenge us as, as, as believers tonight. Uh, if we look at the scripture in 1 Peter 2, verse 25, and I'm reading it from the Amplified Version, it says, But the word of the Lord, His divine instruction, the gospel, endures forever, and this word is the good news which was preached to you. Now, I want to highlight that portion of the scripture that says, The word of the Lord endures forever. Now, if we go to the root language, we find that that word endures is the word menu. And that word menu means to stay in force. So if we look at this, it's actually saying that the word of the Lord is divine instruction. The gospel stay in force forever. And uh, we can read it quickly, and we can just let it go past us. But let us take a step back and just think about that for a moment, and ask ourselves, our, our engagement with the Word of God from this place and this position. Do we really recognize and engage the Word from this place where we have a deep-seated understanding that the word that God is speaking to us is a word that stays in force forever. That brings us to the place where it tells us that the word is unchangeable. So, now if I apply it to the purpose of us getting together and we go and look at some of the things that's going around, you know, the red moon and the, or the red, what do they call it? What all this stuff, and people predicting that Jesus is coming back, and every five years there's a, there's a different date. How do we marry it with what the word is saying? God is not confused, and that is why I say that we've got a responsibility to treat the word with responsibility. <coughs> And to make sure that as we study the word, that we do it accurately and with the correct um, exegesis. Now, if I don't have to ask you, but let's, for the sake of this meeting, just ask the question Do you believe in the Bible? as being the word of God. Everybody's shaking their heads, yes. Then I want to say to you, if we confess and we say that the Bible is the word of God, there's two things that we need to do. The first is that we must acknowledge that the word of God is a supreme and the divine word, and that the statutes of the word endures forever, and that it is unchangeable. Are we in agreement with, with this? Okay. Then if we look at the second portion, and this is where the challenge comes, is that we make a commitment and a decision around this table that we can and will only allow our lives to be influenced by the word. People are very quick <laughs> to say yes to this to this to this statement. Yes. 
So, where does it leave you and me? If we look at this and we ask our, ourselves this question. And I believe that all of us being in the ministry, and all of us sitting here has been in the ministry, we've used the Word of God. And I mean, we've preached the word, we've gone through all this stuff. And I want to place this, and I believe that's the Holy Spirit that activated me to do this. And I want to place a challenge and a demand before each one of us. When I speak, I speak about myself as well. Don't think I'm sitting on a chair here. A high mighty man that's arrived in the process. No, I have not. I can promise you. Just ask my, those that are with me in the ministry, they tell you I still fall on my face from time to time. It's so. So I want to place a challenge before you tonight. And I want to say to you, I want to put a choice before each one of us. And I want to ask you, do you choose and confess today, this moment, from this moment going forward, that you choose deliberately to make the Word of God your highest priority and authority in your life. That you acknowledge that the Word is supreme, that is divine, and that it cannot change. So we've got agreement on that. Now I want to say to you, if you've responded to this and you've said yes, there's a second part to this. <laughs> Oops! <laughs> yeah, we're quick to jump into that fire, uh, Christy. Um, then I ask the question, and to me this is, this is the crux, and uh, that forms the basis of what we're going to do going, going forward. And I ask the question, do you choose today to make the Word of God your only reality? Now, before you respond very quickly and tell me, yes, sir, let me explain something. This is the place where you come to a place where you consciously choose to make the Word of God your only reality. This then would imply that you choose to only respond to life from the Word. Okay? So what is your answer to that? Aha, that I know. That I know. But the thing is, are you willing and are you ready to live your life from this place? Um, so what about that taxi driver in front of you in the morning? How would your accurate response be from the word? What God requires from you? In your marriage relationship with your wife or with your husband, and there's disagreement, how do you respond to that? Your rebellious children, how do you respond to that? <laughs> so, you can see it's not so easy as you said, Chris. We, we're quick to say to the Lord, the Lord, yes, yes, sir, yes. But when it comes to that place where the tacky trevi you know, where you know what that is, Jebel, where your tacky hits the top, okay? Then it's another story. And we find ourselves often in a place where we fall on our faces. And we have to acknowledge that we that we fall short. Now, if we say yes to this, that we're going to live our lives from this moment forward, um, and we're going to live our life according and our conduct according to the word, then it means that now everything that you and I think must now be aligned with the Word. Now, what about your feelings? 
when you get up in the morning on the wrong side of the bed, how are you going to respond? <laughs> you see, this is where the challenge now comes, because this is the reality of, of life. But we have to consciously choose to make the Word of God our reality. So in that situation, we need to take that step back and ask ourselves, what is it that the Word of God requires from me? And the Word of God, if I look at us getting up in the morning and we think of the day ahead and we get depressed and we don't want to get out of bed, then the Scripture tells us the joy of the Lord is my strength. Um, so we have to consciously choose to allow the Word to activate the Spirit on the inside of us so that we can operate from this place and from this position where we live from that reality of the Word. We are no longer dictated uh, by our feelings, but we are dictated of, by what the Word of God tells us and what the Word of God says about us. What you do, everything that you do on a daily basis, needs to be aligned with the Word of God. Now that sounds very spiritual, doesn't it? And we know that life happens to us. And in the process of living a life on a daily basis, you have to really go through a process of changing your mind and your way of thinking and all dimensions of, of your life to be able to come to this place and this position where you can say that I do everything from that place and that position of the Word of God. You see, this implies for you and me that we have to live our lives from within the most holy place where there's a conscious living from, in, from within the manifest presence of God in our lives on a daily on a, on a daily basis. Now, if I look often at our culture and the culture in which we we live, and we all of us here come from different cultures and backgrounds, often you will find yourself in a situation where the community in which you live will expect a certain conduct and a certain behavior from you. Now, the question is, if that conduct and that culture is contradictory to what the scripture requires from us, how are we going to respond? Mm. You see, this is where we have a responsibility as believers mm. to become the word of God mm. in that situation, in those circumstances, within those events, that we raise the standard, not because of how good we are, but because of the Christ that is on the inside of on the inside of us, and that He's chosen you and me and each one of us to become that vessel, that channel through which He can manifest His presence within that culture, within that environment, within that, that community. And that, of course, demands from you and me as well that we must be active in our community. You must be involved in your community. And a very simple test is for me to ask you, do you know your neighbor? Uh, do you know their names? Do you know the name of the, ch of the, of the children um, in your block where you are, where you are staying? Um, do you know the, the, the children in the, in the school environment? If you live opposite a, a school, do you know the teachers? Do you know the principal? Are you involved in that, in that community? Do you know your local policeman? Are you involved there? <clears throat> are you aligning yourself with the word when it comes to your family? Okay, now your family is no is non-believers. How do you respond in that situation? Are you still going to uh, function from the place and position where you are demonstrating your, your um, faith in the Lord Jesus without becoming religious and a religious nut where you tell people all the time that what they are doing is wrong or can you become that vessel through which the love of Jesus 
can flow to your to your family that they are drawn to Christ through your life, not because you're telling them everything that they are doing is is, is wrong. It is to operate in your life from that place and that position where you constantly have in you a clear knowledge and understanding and revelation of what is in the heart of God towards those that you encounter that you encounter. You see, and you can only do that if you live your life from that place and that dimension of intimacy with God. And as I've started off and say to you that we can only do this if we have embraced the Word of God and where the Word of God in every situation like that has become our, our reality. So if I look at, at this, it places before each one of us tonight a very serious challenge that demand for us to live our lives from the Word of God and the Word of God only. It places the demand to us that even the words that I think, that which I feel, no longer carries any relevance to, to what I say or think, but it's only the Word of God. And that we need to test each and every thing that we experience in our day-to-day -day walk against the Word of the Word of God. And I believe that this is a demand that has been placed by God and by the Spirit of the Lord and to which we need to respond. And if we say yes to this, we respond to the Lord, and I want to say we choose life. But if we say, Lord, this is too heavy for me, this is too much for me, we are actually choosing death. And I'm sure that sometimes some of us, when I come to this part, are ready to run away and say, let me go and find another place. Uh, this is too much. This is too much for me. And uh, I want to maybe just, before I conclude for tonight, I, I don't want to go on too long, um, use some practical examples that make it practical. If you've got no money in your wallet, how do you respond to that? What, what is your confession? For most of us, it is, I've got no money. But what does the Word of God say? Doesn't the Word of God say, I will supply all of your needs? You see now, that is where we need to find the balance. It doesn't help us we become super spiritual and then confess <laughs> I own the cattle on a thousand hills because of God my father. But yeah, I don't have bread on my on my table. So we need to find the balance in all of that. But in us there must that be that deep seated reality of that God is my provider. And even if I don't see it manifesting in my wallet now, I know that God is faithful and that He will supply in, in all, of, all of my needs. What about sickness and disease? If you get up in the morning and you're tired, what is your confession? Is your confession, the Lord is my strength, He is my rock, or is your confession, ish, I wish it's wicked that I can just <laughs> sleep late. You guys see that the challenge before us is that we need to really go through a process of where how we think and how we operate need, need, need to change. And uh, I'm going to stop here for tonight. I don't want to drag out tonight and... If the Lord directs me, I'd like to share with you next time on David as a man that lives his life or lived his life according to the Word of God. It's actually an awesome thing. So I, if you would allow me, I'd like to do that then next 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 time. And then thereafter we will do, do the rest. 
Um, so I'm going to stop here for, for now, and I'm going to ask that you guys comment, ask questions, and uh, then if we're done with that, there's just a short exercise that I want us to do, and then we can be dismissed.